All right. Um, can someone type in the chat box if you are able to see my PowerPoint presentation? It should be viewable for everybody. Or you can unmute yourself and say, yes, I can see it. <clears throat> Just want to make sure that we are all on the same page before I get started. Looks like I have a chat coming through. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you guys can see it. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to try and keep an eye on the waiting room up here so I don't forget to let anybody in. Um, so if I pause randomly throughout, I'm sorry, it's probably just because I'm checking that waiting room. Um, alrighty, let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about the seven pillars of self-care. Uh, we as a counseling department felt like this topic was really, really important for this year. Um, after the pandemic, since coming out of the pandemic, we have seen a huge increase in our mental health needs of our students, um, specifically this year. So we felt that it was important to have this conversation on a larger scale. So um, hopefully you guys can start having these conversations at home with your children, with your students to improve not only their mental health, but their physical health. Um, all righty, so let's get started. The first pillar is knowledge and health literacy. So health literacy is the capacity of individuals to obtain, process, and understand basic health information and health services needed to make appropriate health decisions related to physical health and mental health. It's important because people with strong health literacy skills enjoy better health and well being, while those with weaker skills tend to engage in riskier behavior and have poorer health. Um, and that is related to their mental health and their physical health. So how to have good health literacy skills? It's important to seek out information related to good health. Um, internet, of course, is one resource. When you or your students are using the internet, you want to make sure that you are using reputable sources. Um, so reminding your student that if they're doing research on some medical ailment that they think they have, Wikipedia is not the place to go and look for that. Um, you want to include your primary doctor in that conversation um, and any additional doctors that they may refer you out to um, and other industry professionals. It's important to understand the network nature of our body. Our body is a system of networks that are all connected and we really need to care for all of these pieces to practice good health literacy. Um, so that's really what this presentation is going to do as a whole. We're gonna be looking at seven areas um, where we can hopefully identify and um, improve on these seven areas. <clears throat> Um, excuse me, guys, while I admit some more people. So for example, the connected piece of our body, brushing and flossing your teeth is going to be related to good dental hygiene, but it's also linked to heart health. So that's just one example of how our body's connected in maybe ways that we don't realize. And us as adults, I'm sure a lot of us are maybe more familiar with this, but again, um, we want to have this conversation on a larger scale. So our hope today is that you will have these conversations with your students at home. Um, it's important to distinguish between good health information and bad health information. So for example, we may see frequent TV ads for fast food or other foods like that that are not good for our bodies, but that's what we're seeing advertised to us all the time. So it's important to talk to your students um, and remind them that even though that's what we're seeing being advertised for us, that's not necessarily what's best to be putting in our body. <clears throat> So on the Mountain House High campus, um, what we're currently seeing is students struggling with anxiety and depression and do not know how to access or do not know how to ask for mental health services. Um, so one thing that you can do to help uh, with this problem is talk with your students or talk with your children about their emotional state on a regular basis. And if they seem to be struggling with anxiety, depression, or something else, take them to the doctor to learn more. That might just be a quick check-in to make sure that things are okay, um, and that might be all that's needed. 
Um, but sometimes a doctor may refer you to additional services. Maybe that's regular counseling for your student where they can learn coping skills. Um, maybe your student needs medication for something related to mental or physical health. Um, or maybe they maybe need additional, more long-term care, like inpatient therapy um, or something like that. So uh, again, you're going to see this theme come up throughout the presentation, um, what we're seeing on the Mountain House campus and how we hope that you can help with this problem. <clears throat> so pillar two is self-awareness and mental well-being. Um, so self-awareness and mental health um, is a, mental health is a state of well-being in which every individual realizes their own potential and can, can cope with the normal stressors of life um, and can work productively and is able to contribute to community. So, of course, we want all of our students to have good mental health or good overall mental health so they're able to face adversity when it happens. We know that you can't avoid adversity, you can't avoid challenges in this life, but um, we wanna make sure that our mental health is strong enough to when we do face those challenges, we're able to get through them without it disrupting our life um, too significantly. Um, so self-awareness is kind of the second piece of this pillar, and that is the personal and practical application of an individual's health knowledge to their own situation. So it's recognizing your mental health or your physical health concerns, and then determining what are the next steps to do to improve that situation. <clears throat> Why is self-awareness so important? Self-awareness is so important because it is the starting position for all of those future self-care activities. Um, so you wanna identify your areas of strength and determine how you can continue nurturing those areas, and then also identify areas of improvement. And that's probably the even bigger piece. Um, identify those areas where maybe you have some weaknesses or maybe you're not practicing things as well as you should be or your student is not doing that. Um, being self-aware also helps you have um, honest and more meaningful, impactful conversations with those healthcare providers, your doctor, your counselor, whoever that may be involved. Um, if you're self-aware, you're able to communicate your needs more clearly to those individuals. <clears throat> so having good self-awareness uh, means not avoiding those bad habits, uh, recognizing risk factors such, ex such as excessive body weight, addictions, and other bad habits. So it's one thing to, to recognize it, the bigger piece is to have the motivation to change. And I, I, that's definitely the hardest part. And it's probably the hardest part for most of you and probably the hardest part for students as well. So um, it's great to start having these conversations about what may need improvement in our life or in our students' life. Um, but then don't forget that second piece of, well, how are we actually gonna make changes here? It's important to measure and track your health status um, and your changes to your body and mind. So it's good to have general knowledge about yourself or your students, family medical history, vaccination history, resting heart rate, blood pressure, weight and height, and BMI, cholesterol levels, mental health trends, stress levels, sleep levels, oral health. Um, if there's something major that, uh, that changes in one of those things, you want to be able to recognize it um, and, and then hopefully seek out information um, or support services to help you with that situation. If your student used to sleep eight hours every night and then all of a sudden they're sleeping four hours every, every night pretty consistently, that's probably an indicator that something is happening either physically or maybe with their mental health. So. Um, if you are self-aware or if you can teach your children to be self-aware of those trends, then they may be triggered to something um, wrong more quickly than if we're not aware. Also important to understand lifestyle factors that impact the mental and physical health. <clears throat> So on the Mountain House High campus, um, what we're seeing right now is students not reflecting on the behaviors that may not be serving them well. Therefore, they're unaware of how damaging that they can be. 
So one major thing that we're seeing consistently is really staying up late with that screen time, whether that's playing video games on the phone, um, you know, watching shows. That has been a pretty consistent problem with our students, and it's uh, impacting their sleep schedules. It's impacting their performance during the day. And sleep is also a huge regulator of your physical and mental health as well. The other thing that we're seeing on this campus is um, students being involved in a, a negative group of friends or maybe a group of friends that's not serving them well um, and continuing spending time with those friends even after multiple scenarios of drama or issues amongst that friend group. So um, talking to your students about who they're hanging out with and um, uh, if those students are appropriate, acting in an appropriate way or good for for their mental and physical health. The other thing that we're seeing is not eating enough healthy meals, smoking and vaping. All of these things are detrimental to mental, mental and physical health. So having conversations with your students or your children about these things to see if this is stuff that they're engaged in um, and then how can they improve it. So how can you guys help having a conversation with your student and ask them to reflect on the things that are healthy in their life and then also identifying those areas where they can improve. And that's probably the harder part for them to do. Um, so they may need parent guidance with that. Um, you guys can come up with strategies together for improvement. It can be really helpful to have some type of reward to encourage positive behavior, especially in the beginning when you're looking at changing a bad habit or changing a behavior. Having some type of reward system can be a good motivator. <clears throat> Pillar three is physical activity. Physical activity is defined as bodily movement produced by the skeletal muscles that requires energy. It's essential to good health. Um, regular exercise can reduce the risk of many non-communicable diseases. Um, it's also a huge positive indicator on someone's mental health. Why is physical activity so important? Regular physical activity improves health, fitness, and mood. Um, and this does not have to be intense um, 60 minutes at the gym. It can be, you know, yoga, walking, cycling, um, anything that would be uh, um, outside moving your body. So it doesn't have to be a super demanding sport for them to get the benefits of physical activity, just reminding them that having some type of physical activity um, every day is really going to help not only their physical health, but their mental health as well. Adequate levels of physical activity help to control weight and reduce the risk of metabolic illnesses. Being active can reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, colon, breast cancer, dementia, and so much more. There's a range of benefits. It reduces stress, increased mental health, improves sleep, strengthens your muscles, so it reduces the risk of injury. Um, and on average, about 30 minutes per day of physical activity is recommended. A lot of your students might be needing this or going above and beyond it because maybe they participate um, you know, in a sport inside or outside of campus. But we also have lots of students that are maybe more involved in our academic based clubs or organizations, and maybe they don't have a the time to be part of one of our sports on campus. It's still important to remind those students to get out of their desk, get out of their chair, um, practice some sort of physical activity. One of my favorites is um, yoga because it combines deep breathing and moving your body. Um, and it really brings the physical and mental health pieces together. So if your student is looking for something, yoga, stretching, great um, physical activity for them. We have tons of resources, videos on the counseling blog if they ever need ideas. So on the Mountain House High campus, students may not be realizing the connection between physical health and mental and physical health. I think most students are recognizing that physical activity um, improves your physical health. But I don't think all students recognize the significant impact that physical activity can have on your mental health. And so um, if you guys can have those conversations with your students, that would be a real benefit 
to us as well um, and a benefit to them. So if you know your student is currently struggling with something, um, especially during this time, we're headed into finals, stress is at a high for the year, I'm sure. Holiday season can be difficult for families, for students, depending on your situation. Um, so I know it's cold outside, but remind them to try and get some physical activity in at least once a day. Maybe it's something that you guys can start doing together as a family, going on a daily walk or um, doing some yoga together, whatever it may be. Um, remind them that physical activity does release um, endorphins, which is that, you know, our body's happy chemical. It makes us feel better. <clears throat> All right, so pillar four is healthy eating. Um, diet and healthy eating play a major role in self-care, so maintaining health and reducing the risk of diet-related non-communicable diseases. Diet is considered one of the two primary factors for non-communicable diseases. Um, between physical health and diet, those are the two pieces that will really help with preventing diseases. Why is healthy eating important? So improving your diet and exercise can reduce the risk of up to 80% of non-communicable diseases. Um, it's important to be careful not to overconsume. Um, students should be consuming a balanced diet. They should be cons uh, consuming nutrient-rich foods. And childhood obesity is one of the major risks to children's today. Childhood obesity, obesity and unhealthy diet habits can and will most likely lead to major concerns and possible diseases in adulthood, in addition to creating those negative habits for themselves, right? They start now. So if, if your student or your child is um, developing some of those negative eating habits now, if it's not something that is identified and hopefully stopped and changed at this point, it's gonna go with them into adulthood and it may not change. It gets harder to change the older we get. Um, on the Mountain House High Campus, the current issue that we are seeing right now is students skipping meals, breakfast and or lunch, or eating fast food meals often. I'm always seeing the DoorDash um, uh, show up to campus. And while sometimes I'm jealous because the food does look good, it's not always um, the best option as far as what's good for our body. So how can you help? Um, make sure your student has access to nutrient-rich foods and encourage them to eat before school and during the school day. Those two pieces are really important. If your student is skipping breakfast and maybe not eating lunch, they're going all day long um, without having those nutrients. And they're really, really essential to make sure that they're able to be productive on the campus um, and feeling good. So. Uh, check in with your students or your children to monitor, but also encourage their eating habits. This is a big one. Allow students to aid in picking out what foods they want to eat. Um, having control and choices can be a really positive impact when you're looking at food intake. So if you know this is something your student is struggling with right now, um, have them go with you to the store and help you pick out meals. Maybe they can even, you guys could meals together or something. It can be an activity that the family does together. Um, but having that sense of control over what we eat can help with food intake if that's something that your student is struggling with. Um, if it's an ongoing struggle and you may think that it may be something deeper where there's some kind of eating disorder that may be involved, we encourage you to please take your children or your student to the doctor to have that conversation with them um, and get the support there. Um, one other thing is to allow cheat meals um, every once in a while. Uh, we want to make sure that, yes, we want the healthy stuff, but we can't have a kale salad every day. So we do want to build in some of those cheat meals so there is some balance. <laughs> All right. Pillar five is risk avoidance and risk mitigation. Risk mitigation refers to the avoidance or reduction of behaviors that directly increase the risk of disease or death. Um, so all of us are going to be taking risks throughout our lives. 
children, especially high schoolers, are at that age where they're maybe starting to explore riskier behaviors. Um, so it's important to remind them that individuals are free to choose their own actions and their own risks, but you're not free from the consequences of those choices. Some decisions will have negative consequences. Um, so it's important to be making decisions that will reduce the risk of those negative consequences. Why is risk avoidance important? Um, it's important to avoid those high-risk behaviors because it's been shown to significantly reduce preventable mortality and reduce all-cause mortality. It could also increase life expectancy by 8 to 12 years. Benefits could be even greater when risk avoidance is started from an early age. So this one makes me think of if your student is someone that smokes or is vaping. That's the more popular option right now. Some students are vaping. That's not a healthy habit to have. And if they've started it already here in their teen years and continue it through adulthood, that's definitely something that could take years off of their life. Um, that's been proven. So having those conversations now and letting them know the risk of um, what, the, what that behavior may be causing um, is important. So this is a general list of risk mitigation activities. There's so much more than this, but this is uh, just kind of a more general list. I tried to pick stuff that was going to be um, somewhat related to our age population here, high school students. Um, so it's important to receive those necessary vaccinations and medical treatment when necessary, um, not smoke or quit smoking, avoiding nicotine, tobacco, other drugs harmful to the body drinking in moderation, of course, 21 plus, um, protecting yourself from the sun, wearing sunscreen, wearing the appropriate um, clothes, hats, whatever that may be to protect your skin, driving carefully, following road laws, wearing a seatbelt, wearing a helmet when riding a bike. Um, that one's actually really near and dear to my heart these days. My dad just got in an accident and they told him that if he had not been wearing a helmet, he would have died. So that's been one where I've really been encouraging that to students when I'm seeing it lately. So I hope you, um, you guys will do the same with your children at home. Screen time in moderation, saving money for the future, uh, avoid sharing private information online. That's another really big one that I hope um, you guys can have conversations with your students with at home. Avoiding sexting, sending photos, personal information, financial information, all of those things. Practicing safe sex. And then also avoiding people who are participating in riskier behaviors. Um, so that kind of goes back to the social groups that your friends are around, um, what I was talking about a little bit earlier. If your student's involved in a social group that's um, involved in a lot of risky behavior, having those conversations about, is this the best friend group for you to be hanging out with? So on the Mountain House High campus, the current issue that we're seeing is students engaging in risky behaviors like vaping, smoking, other drugs, and drinking. Um, and then the one that we see all the time, time and time again, is students spending way too much time on screen time. Um, consistently, we hear that students are staying up till 3, 4 a.m., um, playing video games, talking online, uh, being on their phone, watching shows, whatever it may be. Um, and it's been causing a huge issue, not only with their mental and physical health, but also their academic performance here on the campus. Um, so how can you guys help as parents having an open line of communication about your students' riskier behaviors? Um, this is gonna be a more challenging one, right? Because um, if they are engaging in some of these riskier behaviors, they may be afraid to talk to you about it for fear of getting in trouble. Um, so if you're able to try and create a safe, non-judgmental environment where they can talk to you about this type of stuff, um, it might open that line of communication where they can share with you the experiences that you are having and you can share with them, um, you know, what might be risky about those behaviors and maybe what they could be doing differently um, uh, to, you know, be in a safer space. This is definitely the second one is definitely something you guys could help us out um, with is setting those limits for the screen time. This is 
a huge one for us this year, um, especially around bedtime. Every day, I think we talk to a student that says that they are staying up till 3 or 4 a.m. Um, doing one of these activities. So if you guys are able to set limits, that would be really helpful. If they're not following those limits um, or breaking those rules, even going as far to remove the items from their room or remove the items from their environment, um, especially at nighttime, Maybe, you know, not permanently necessarily, depending on your family situation, but um, at least at nighttime. So um, at night, they really have no other option but to sleep and they and they don't hop on those video games. So that's something at, um, if you guys take something from today, definitely check in on the screen time. That's a big one that's been causing mental, physical issues on the campus, but then of course impacting their academic day. Pillar six is having good hygiene. Um, so good hygiene is a specific set of practices associated with the preservation of health and to present, prevent the spread of diseases. It's important um, having access to good sanitation increases health, well-being, and economic productivity. It protects people around us and reduces the economic burden of pre preventable illnesses, like having less days off sick um, and then reduce healthcare spending. A few good hygiene practices for your body, uh, brushing and flushing teeth two times a day, regular visits to the dentist, um, cleaning your body every day, regularly washing your hands with soap and water, applying deodorant, covering your mouth when sneezing and coughing. And then environmental hygiene would be having access to clean and safe water, proper food handling. So that means properly preparing and storing meats and washing those fruits and veggies, preparing meals in a sanitized area, regularly washing clothes and bedding and keeping the household areas clean and sanitized. Um, we only have 10 minutes, guys, is the downside of Zoom is that it only gives us 45 minutes. So luckily we are on the last pillar, but we might run out of time for questions. If we do, please feel free to email any questions you may have. I'll put them on a document and send them out to everybody. Um, so the current issue that we're seeing on the Mountain House High campus is students coming to school with really strong body odor. Um, and this is causing unpleasant odors in the classroom and can be distracting for other students. Um, so how can you guys help at home ensure that your child is washing their body daily and try to remind them to use deodorant in the morning before coming to school? Um, they're at that age where hormones are really racing and it, it can cause stronger body odors, not to mention a lot of them are involved in sports during the day, PE, playing out um, on the quad during lunchtime. So we want to try to control the body odors as much as possible. Of course, we're human, so it's not going to be um, possible 100% of the time, but anything that they can do um, uh, to help improve the situation would be ideal, of course. Um, so if this, if your family struggles financially and maybe does not have access to regular hygiene products, tell your student to reach out to their counselor or you can reach out to um, the counselors directly. We can connect you or your student with the hygiene products they may need. We have little kits of little deodorant, shampoo and conditioner, body wash, uh, um, toothbrush, floss, that type of stuff. So if they need something or maybe they forgot to put deodorant on that day and need deodorant, they can come and see us. We have little kits that we can give out. All right, pillar seven is the rational use of products and services involves individuals safely and effectively managing their health and any everyday ailments or minor conditions with appropriate medicines, products, or services. Self-care products and services are the tools of self-care um, and support health awareness and health practices. It's important um, to use the correct health products and services um, to maintain your health and wellness. It's also important to recognize when you need some additional services or support because delaying the use of those products or services can worsen your present condition, whether that's related to your mental or physical health, um, or it can cause new conditions or diseases to arise. A few healthy practices may include prescription medications, of course, in conjunction with the doctor, non-prescription uh, medicine, preventable health products like dental care, mosquito netting. It's not something we really, really need in this area, but maybe if you go camping, um, sleeping aids, supportive braces, 
natural health products, vitamins, minerals, and supplements, devices and diagnostics, so home blood pressures or diabetes aids, wellness services like nutrition planning, gym memberships, and then also our health services like mental health therapy, acupuncture, chiropractic services, support groups for smoking, drug uses, and other um, eating disorders or other disorders. So on the Mountain House High Campus, this is something that we see very often. Um, students asking their parents about mental health services or requesting uh, mental health services from their parents or requesting to go talk to a doctor about their mental health um, and not really being taken seriously by their parent or guardian. So then they don't receive that help that they're asking for or that they may need. Um, so how can you guys help in this situation? When your child approaches you about a mental health concern or a physical health concern, um, do not dismiss it or tell them that they may get over it. You know, really try to listen and hear those concerns and then take them to the doctor or counselor or additional services. Maybe that's one check-in to see that things are all good, but maybe that's setting up more long-term or maybe a short-term care type situation. So um, it's definitely one of those things you just want to get check-in um, and, and make sure things are okay. And if they're not, there's a uh, support services um, doctor available to help. And of course, us here at the high school, you can always keep us in the loop of what's going on with your student. And then it remember, delaying those services can significantly worsen the mental or physical condition of your child. This is something that we are seeing this year. Students coming to us saying that they've asked their parents um, to go see a counselor outside of school, not getting set up with that counselor. And then um, that anxiety or their depression or whatever it may be worsens. And sometimes it even worsens to the point of suicidal ideation. Um, I don't want to scare parents, but that has been a, an increase this year. We have seen an increase in that suicidal ideation. So we're really trying to get ahead of it, have these conversations on a larger scale with our students and with our families um, to make sure that um, everybody's informed, but also knows how to get connected to the services that they may need. Um, all right, so I know that was a lot of information for you guys. It will be posted on the counseling blog later. I will send a link out. So if you want to go back and revisit any of this information, you're more than welcome to do so. I also plan on running success sessions next semester um, that address these pillars. We probably wouldn't address all seven in one success because we wouldn't have time for that. But um, this will be coming to your students next semester. Um, I would encourage your students to attend success if they have the opportunity to learn about some of these elements. Um, but what I really hope that you guys got from today is that um, you can go home, take this information, have these conversations with your students and see in what areas can they improve. Um, all right, we only have um, three um, question, or three minutes left for questions. I do see that there is um, a question that was posted in here. It's kind of a long one, uh, so I don't know if I have time to address it right now, but I've copied it and I've um, added it to my email. So I will address this question um, from Sanjay. I can see Sanjay, this came from you. Um, I will address this question uh, through email with you. Um, but if there was any other uh, questions, please feel free to um, unmute yourself and ask, or you can put it in the chat. I've got the chat up now, so I'm able to see any um, chat message that you send. And again, we only have two and a half minutes. So if we get cut off, I do apologize. Please send me your questions through um, email. My email is on the website a foot at lammersvilleusd.net. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email them to me and I will certainly address them. <clears throat> it doesn't look like we have any questions coming through. Um, Sanjay, it looks like you had some concerns about um, getting rid of the brunch this year. Um, and you would like me to pass that message along to the administration team. And yes, we will absolutely pass that message along. Um, it has been a concern this year. You're 100% right. 
Um, breakfast is in the morning. Hopefully your students are able to get here earlier enough to have breakfast. Um, and then they have their lunch time starting at about 12 or, well, 12 about every day, 11.45 um, on a couple of days. So um, it is a long chunk of time that they're going without food. If you're able to send your student with a snack or something like that, I know most teachers are okay with a student eating a little snack in class um, if they need to, as long as they're you know, cleaning up their mess and not disrupting the classroom. Um, if your student is ever super, super hungry and really needs something, they didn't get something to eat all day, tell them to come check in with us um, counselors or in the wellness center, we can try and get them hooked up with a snack or something like that. So um, we have less than one minute on the presentation left. Um, I'm sorry to get cut off, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. I will send this information out um, later today. Um, if not tomorrow, it'll be posted on the blog, just kind of depending how long it takes to edit the video. Um, but thank you for joining us this morning. I hope this information was useful. Encourage your students to review this information or come see me next semester during success to learn more about it. All right, I hope everybody has a great day and rest of their week. Please feel free to reach out through email with any questions that you might have. Bye. Hi, can I talk to you for a minute uh, in person? Hi.